plains of Beni lie in the flat lowland area which is to the east of the Andes. They flood to a depth of over a metre every wet season when the torrential rains cascade down from the hills, filling the rivers which race to join the Amazon overflow. Now the earth of these plains is not porous, so the flood water lies there for at least four months of that year. Today, the vegetation is poor and a few people live there. But the theory is that once this area was densely inhabited by one of the earliest civilizations in South America, perhaps the ancestors of the Incas and all the other cultures of the Andes. For some 2,000 years, a race of 500,000 people existed in the lowlands of Central South America. The tribe known as the Mojos and other tribes overcame the inundations by building their settlements on hand-raised mounds and cultivating crops on elevated fields surrounded by an extensive system of irrigation canals and causeways connected the mounds. But by the time the Spanish arrived, the raised fields were abandoned and the people disappeared. Archaeologists and anthropologists are unsure why this happened. It could have been caused by climate change, the cultural impact of the arrival of the Spanish, or perhaps even disease. Indeed, a bleeding fever thought to be carried by rats broke out in the region in 1965. This fever eventually disappeared, possibly helped by the introduction of hundreds of cats who ate the rats. However, the disappearance of the early people is still a mystery. And so it was that Sergio Tecmin, the Bolivian Geological Institute, whom, with whom the scientific exploration societies worked in the past, said that they believed this civilization could have been destroyed by the impact of a huge meteorite. And a study of the configuration of Lake Royo Aguado and nearby lakes and rivers has suggested that this is a possibility. And if so, there may be valuable minerals in the area and useful information on climate change could be obtained. We were asked if we could undertake the study to find out what happened and whether there was in fact evidence of a meteorite strike and try to discover as much as we could about the archaeology, the geology and at the same time to help the people of this desperately poor area. In July 2009 our team was to go out uh, to Bolivia and starting at Santa Cruz would move its way north to the small village of Coquinal which is in the uh, middle of the plain area of the Beni. There were 22 people. We were a mixture of talents. We had a geologist, an archaeologist, doctors, dentists, engineers and some experts on horses. We also had a biologist, an economist an IT expert who was in charge of the signals, an ornithologist and a cartographer. And we were a mixture of Bolivian and British people, uh, also with Australians, Colombians and so on. So it was an international body. But um, we of course were greatly assisted by the local people of Coquinal. As we loaded our stores in Santa Cruz, we were hit by a sarasso a cold front that sweeps up from Antarctica and the temperature plummeted down almost to freezing. Nevertheless, we pressed on using our vehicles to get to Trinidad and then to Santa Ana and hopefully to Coquinal. This is Johnny one or two, one of them. Elvis with us and Peter and this yellow and green thing we call the yellow god. And, um, we've been delayed in Trinidad by uh, road conditions north of here due to the Sarasso and we're now uh, cross-loading all our stores from the six-ton truck to the ten-ton yellow god um, as, we, as we call it, which is a huge vehicle which we're taking north of here and that should be able to tow us out of any difficult uh, places. But uh, the weather has been appalling for the last 24 hours. Thank goodness the rain has stopped. 
and uh, although it's very cold, uh, we are about to set off north towards Santa Ana and then Coquinal. The first part of the journey is about 220 kilometers to Santa Ana, three crossings over rivers to make by pontoon. Uh, we've got the uh, four four-wheel drives, a kayak, and we shall be picking up the yellow god, the ten-tonner, soon. Two of the four-wheel drives are towing boats, one of which is the LED Sanford ambulance. Uh, and we're all ready to go. At long last, it's taken a hell of a time to get this sorted out. Uh, but um, the weather is staying dry, which is something to be very thankful for. Now here we are at the uh, Mamaray, uh, a pretty big river. This is one of the Amazon tributaries uh, on one of the earlier Cota Mamaray expeditions. Uh, we sailed down the Mamaray into the, into the Madeira and then into the Amazon. And uh, using these uh, pontoons, we're taking the vehicles across. We've sent the uh, yellow god, the ten-tonner, uh, up, up ahead, drive. Uh, going over, and that's going to be followed by the Koyak and the other three um, four-wheel drives. Leaving Trinidad, we got onto this terrible road that led to Santa Ana. It was really like the Somme battlefield. Our Koyak vehicle, which was a Bolivian Army Special Forces vehicle, uh, which we'd bought, turned out to be a total disaster. It was too low to cope with the mud, and uh, sadly it didn't get uh, very far. But we pressed on north, trying to help local people who also were stuck, and the temperature now was about 14 degrees centigrade, so it was still rather cold. of July, second day out of Trinidad, this is the third ferry crossing today, and in the Yellow God we've made about 140 or more kilometres. Whilst the four-wheel drives went ahead, Andy Gray uh, brought on the Yellow God. Unfortunately one of the ferrymen lost the tips of his fingers in a winch, getting this great vehicle across the rivers in the darkness. Uh, we have now decided that the only way to get into Coquinal, due to this sudden flood that swept down from the high ground, is that we must fly. It came to me costing us a lot of money, which uh, is unfortunate. Um, but we've managed to find uh, a tourist hotel that is empty on the outskirts of Santa Ana, called the Hotel Mamare. Very, very pleasant. Um, and for a very good rate indeed, the Swiss owner, Ernesto, has offered to take us in for a few days and so that we can sort out our stores, much of which are covered in mud from the journey up here, uh, and prepare them to airlift people uh, into Coquinal with a limited amount of stores. Then what will happen is that uh, we hope as soon as the flood subsides, which may be a week, might even be more, some of the vehicles in to bring us more supplies to see us through to the end of the expedition. When we arrived in Coquinal, we found the people were celebrating their 200th anniversary, and most of them had had an awful lot to drink.
Part of the celebration was the bullfight. In fact, bullfights here are rather different to those in Spain. Uh, the bull is ridden by some rather brave chap who usually had an awful lot to drink, like most of the people there. And this bull was very good at hooking up some of the spectators who were teasing him. North of Santa Ana is the Rio Irianes, and it had burst its banks, floods on either side, and was going to block any further progress by us. So Yulima went out and managed to hire a small Cessna aircraft that could take us four at a time up to Coquinal, and the vehicles would have to follow later. Flying north over the flooded terrain, uh, we passed the fields, the elevated fields built by the Mokos thousands of years ago. And so the main body of the expedition arrived at Coquinal village, where some 50 families live, uh, and they have a school, and most importantly, of course, an airstrip. Darío. Barrio, barrio. Very. Okay. Going to see where we are going to be camped. Pendientes is right in the middle of our wandering around in the town at the edge of the runway. This is going to be set up as a little clinic. This is going to provide you the ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very good. The local industry in Coquinal is the production of chive. This is a powder made from yucca, which turns into a much prized beverage and is exported to Trinidad. Over an open fire and roast it. No. It's very hot work. And then, and then it's saved here. And it's very, this is chiva. 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 And it is the roasted yucca <laughs> with water, agua, and mm. sugar. Azucar. It says azucar. Yeah. Oh, well, I know what to say. Ah, thank you so much. It's very good for the digestive system, right? For the a key. <laughs> On the second day, the flights brought in the final party uh, from Santa Ana. And there was the corregidor, the head of the village, to greet us with the various elders. Do you remember Yes, I remember. Do you remember Milton? Milton, Milton, muy bien. Because none of our vehicles had been able to get to Coquinal, Yulima had hired the horses and also an ox cart called a cariton. The cariton is now ready to move, God willing, and with the flag of Bolivia and the Union Jack uh, hoisted, it's about to set off for Maravilla on the first uh, uh, shakedown uh, patrol by the horse group. There they'll be doing veterinary and dental work uh, and also looking at the geology, archaeology, and everything else. They've got eight fine horses, led by Alex Jess, um, and uh, 
all is now in order. It's taken a little time to get them together, as you imagine, and I think we're ready to go. Hasta la vista. Bye bye. 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 Adiós. Adiós, muchachos. Back in Coquinal, one of our dentists, Major Rika Strickland of the Royal Army Dental Corps, was hard at work already. It was pretty hot, 32 degrees centigrade and very humid. The people have a very high tolerance of pain and they don't seem to object too much to the um, treatment of the dentist. Luika had brought in a stock of teddy bears. And the idea was to give these to children when they had a tooth taken out. But the problem was, in no time at all, the kids were coming along and saying, please take my tooth out, I want a teddy bear. In the clinic, uh, Jackie, our Bolivian doctor, uh, is helping the people with reading glasses. Uh, these we bought from Britain, given by people all over uh, Dorset. And uh, uh, obviously for the older people, uh, it's a great um, advantage to have some glasses that you can see to sew if you're a woman, and in the case of the schoolmasters, to read. <laughs> we made up our camp in our tents uh, in the village. And the local people very kindly built us a dining shelter in no time at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the village clinic, Roy de Silva, one of our doctors, was hard at work uh, treating the local people. This little girl had a nasty wart on her leg. Uh, she said, yeah, she'd like to. So we're just going to freeze this for you. We'll just put that cold. And 10 seconds. It's not too. And uh, that's her. So the new home, they've come around to visit. Her. How did they come here? By... One of our Bolivians was Remy Russell, uh, a reserve soldier in the Bolivian Armed Forces. And he was a specialist in a community tasks, and he spent some time teaching the local children about conservation and sanitation. Fernando, who's going to have a tooth extracted that has a great big hole in it, and he has had some pain for two weeks now. He's going to feel much better after this is done. Alec is, Alex is going to take a, a baby molar, a milk tooth, they call it here, from Fernando's lower right jaw. Major Alex Jess of the Royal Army Dental Corps was our other dentist, but in addition, he also commanded the horse team. Dr. Hazel Dobinson from Australia was the horse team's doctor. She was also a tropical medicine expert, but sadly she couldn't do a great deal about the deformed hands and feet. So she was born with this, and unfortunately we probably don't have the equipment to do anything about it. So, an ortho? Let's see, we miss more. Okay. Can you turn it over for me? <laughs> <laughs> Which is 
and the toes too. And the other one. Oh, I see. Interesting. El 20 de noviembre. Ah, nearly, oh, nearly dead, eh? Yes, yes. This is a chronic ulcer. It might be a tropical ulcer. It seems to have started with infection and over the last 18 months, and it has not healed. So it's unlikely we're better to do much with it, but we'll try with antibiotics and dressings and keeping it clean to, infect, to close the wound. Although you can see the edges of the wound are or chronically hard and indurated, which means the likelihood of the wound closing without plastic surgery is very minimal. Okay. So unfortunately, it looks like it's just going to be permanent for him. It's not going to be something that we can help an awful lot, but we can do. Oh, um, te gusta mucho um, ser aquí, si cuando nos, nosotros um, uh, vayamos uh, esta tarde, se el corazón es muy grande. <laughs> Wherever we went, we gave school books uh, to the local children. These were much appreciated, as were indeed the special maps that Tim Harrison, our cartographer, had, had made back in Somerset. The people are very patriotic, and every morning the children assemble to sing the national anthem before starting lessons. We are beside uh, Lago Royo Aguado, a name we've talked about for a great while. And here we are at last with the uh, first party going over to the small village of Nueva Esperanza. Uh, two boats are going, uh, 10 of our people, suitably clad in life jackets, and the boats are pecky peckies run by this uh, little um, uh, outboard engine which has a long shaft and a propeller at the end. Ideal for uh, shallow water. We've used them a lot in the past on the various rivers uh, in uh, uh, the Beni region. And uh, the party will take about two hours to go across. And there they're going to assess the water problem. Uh, which is something that just a drop is hoping to put in a well uh, to solve and also of course to give medical aid and dental aid. They've got Lorica uh, with her dental equipment and Jackie with the medical. Um, Peter Knight and Dominic are handling the, um, the water and Andy's in charge of the group. He's uh, also on the communications uh, and of course uh, the geology is being looked after by Dan Bokins. And uh, so there's a, a big team of people going across, Tim Harrison navigating. And um, they're going for uh, two days, so they should be back, God willing, uh, tomorrow. Life jackets were really necessary because sometimes great storms can build up on the lake. And in fact, after the expedition left, some of the water engineers from the contractors were crossing this lake when their boat turned over and they were almost drowned. We're going to a small lake uh, which is six kilometers north of Coquinal. We're going to go there by a, uh, a boat to start with to get past some of the worst swampy areas. And, um, and then we're going to be going by foot. And there's the four of us. Hi. Have a great day. Enjoy it. Bill, Bill Oddie and Kate Humble, I see you.
fuck out of it. There were said to be freshwater dolphins living in the lakes, rather like you find on the Amazon. We were asked to look for these. Right behind you. Oh, oh, oh. This is the okay. And in fact, this picture taken by Roy de Silva shows a black one, and they were very difficult to photograph. Here we have our favorite fisher ladies. <laughs> the first team. <laughs> the first team, 18. We they went this morning <laughs> at 4 o'clock in the morning. And what time did you leave this morning? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock in the and morning. The man was not late one minute, he was on time. Goodness me. <laughs> Look at the, the first row of fish. What is the name of this? Piranha. Piranha. Piranha, piranha. And the second one? Uh, the medical Tukunari. team are now heading off. Uh, to Rincon del Palmar, uh, heavily laden, one horse short, which has suddenly uh, decided it was pregnant, uh, and they are they've got uh, a long day's ride, being met en route by Carlos, the owner of the little estancia to where they're going, who is going to ferry them forward on one at a time on his motorbike. Already, uh, Jackie has gone on with him, and hopefully uh, we'll have supper prepared by the time they arrive. Uh, it's the 9th of August, we're in Coquinao, and I'm talking to the expedition archaeologist, Simon Reams, about some of the finds made by local people that have been brought in for him to see. Um, Simon, what, what do you think of these artifacts? Well, first off, we have um, five nice pieces, hopefully from the same sort of assemblage. The first three pieces here are axe heads. The main one that you can see, the largest one, seems to be the only one that we have that has any sort of use wear on it. The, re the other two seem to be fairly pristine, but this one, you can see all around the edge, has had a fair amount of use, which could have been for tree cutting, could have been for any everyday sort of use. There, are some mi there is some other minor damage to this, but I think the main majority of the use has come from its original life uh, when it was being used uh, in the past. The other two pieces, although smaller, are, are still fairly pristine. They still have the sharp sort of edge to them. Any damage that you can see on them are fairly recent nicks and scratches. These two pieces, I believe, would have been pristine pieces, pieces that would have been fairly important, maybe used for trade or for barter or, for, or as prestige pieces to keep as fairly unique items. The best part of these three items shows that there was a trade route established and working with an Andean culture up in the highlands. The next two pieces are uh, pottery vessels. Here we have a lovely little pot, most probably a kitchen vessel. Very, very nicely done. Some modern um, graffiti is on it, but I don't think that damages it too much. There doesn't appear to be any sort of old painting or any old um, decoration on it. Feeling on the inside there, it doesn't appear to have any sort of wheel thrown. It appears to be fairly smooth the whole way around, which could mean it wasn't um, coil made, but rather wheel thrown, uh, which is a fairly advanced stage, uh, advanced way of uh, pottery making. The last piece is a pot base, very, very abraded. My guess is this has come out of the earth, gone into a river, and as, as the river's been flowing, all the sediment has washed over it and smoothed across all of the surface, um, smoothing over all of the abraded surfaces and all of these sharp um, surfaces. So the last two pieces are um, very nice little pottery vessels. Well, that's marvellous. What, what sort of age do you think these pieces are? It's difficult to say an age range without actually being there to see where they were discovered, but pieces like this have been dated to 1500 to 2000 years old and if these are all from the same sort of um, same sort of context there's no reason that these can't be of that same similar date
And do you think these come from the Mokos civilization? If they were found in this region, then yes, definitely. Well, you're off again at uh, dawn on your next, next quest, where we believe uh, some of these items actually were found. So uh, lots of luck with your next uh, journey to the east. It's a beautiful morning uh, in Coquinal on the 4th of August, and uh, uh, Dan and uh, Peter Lee Jones and Remy are about to set out to look at a, a possible uh, site for a crater impact. It's been spotted to the south of here, about 20 kilometers away, by a senior geologist who came to see us in Santa Cruz, and uh, looked at the uh, satellite pictures that Tim Harrison had produced, and said, that looks like a likely site. So uh, our geologist, Dan, is going um, over there today for three days uh, to have a look at the site. The horses are an interesting combination, fairly gentle. Um, the one with Dan at the moment has got a drop ear. I always call it the drop ear horse. Uh, but uh, um, the, the tack is interesting too. It's made up of a mixture of old bits of rope and leather. But it seems to work. And these people, after all, are dependent on their horses to get around this vast bit of savanna country. Have a great trip. Bye, Ali. Bye. See you. Have a wonderful time. See you in a couple of days. See you. See you later. See you, later. See you in a couple of days. Te va a ir bien, Remy. Les va a ir bonito. Te vemos en varios días. When I developed a poisoned foot, I was treated both by a doctor with antibiotics and also by the village shaman with a frog. The uh, wriggly frog is being applied to my right foot. The shaman is, is drying the foot, which has just come out of salt water, uh, with a tea towel. And she's rubbing the uh, slightly scaly frog up and down on the infected part of my foot. The frog uh, has not objected at all to this. Um, I must admit, if I were the frog, I think um, I wouldn't find it very pleasant. This is something that Western medicine has not uh, explored. Uh, perhaps it's a form of acupuncture using frogs. Um, uh, my daughter, who's an acupuncturist, might be, used, might be amused to see this. <laughs> There's lots of advice coming in from Beatrice the cook um, and uh, one of the elders who's arrived. <coughs> uh, small uh, children are looking in through the window with <laughs> amazement. The frog is quite content. <laughs> yes, the frog's tummy is going pink. And they say that that is the infection coming out of my foot. Well, the frog is certainly turning pink. Um, now, whether that is um, yeah, yeah, my infection or I'm not sure. The shaman says that the pink on the frog's tummy is due to the infection um, in my foot. Well, now the um, lady shaman has arrived uh, with uh, some aloe, which is a, ra a rather prickly green plant, uh, which uh, her assistant is uh, shredding it with a rather large knife. When I saw that, I thought for a moment they intended to amputate. But uh, uh, they're scraping the jelly-like substance uh, from the skin of the aloe uh, into a, a bowl in which there's some white powder. Uh, I'm not quite salt. sure what that is. You know it. Salt. 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 Yes. It's salt. Um, and they're making a, a, a mixture of aloe and salt, which they are going to apply uh, to the foot. Uh, the shaman is now wiping on the uh, infected foot with her fingers. The, um, it's really quite soothing, actually. Oh, oh yeah. Oops. Other reptiles in the area included snakes, especially anacondas. These have been caught during the flood. 
But one night we had a serious incident when Walter Dazza, one of our boatmen, was bitten by a viper and was soon pretty ill. A young man has just been bitten by a snake about 60 centimeters in length um, in the leg. Uh, Roy Silver is treating him at the moment. Um, the snake appears to be a viperine type, although we've not been able to identify it finally from the book on snakes. There are several who look quite like it, but the uh, local people say that a number of uh, villagers have been bitten by snakes like this, and one died recently. Next morning, Dr. Roy de Silva decided to evacuate the patient by air, so we sent him off to the Santa Ana Hospital together with the snake in a bottle. The villagers held a service to pray for the victim's health and so we practiced some hymns to sing at that service. Lord forgive us, who like thee his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Alumnos, atención, fir! Alumbro, ar! On the 6th of August, Bolivia celebrates its Independence Day. And the night before, the local children with lanterns parade round and round the village. And then the next day, there are parades in front of the school. In between tasks, Alex Jess brought his horse team back to Coquinal to reprovision. Welcome back. The, the horses and the guides were absolutely incredible. Very, very steady, very, very sturdy, and the guides just knew how to pace us properly, and that was very secure for us. The people in the village were wonderful. They were very welcoming, and in fact, they cooked us a special lunch. I love it. Two chicken soup, two chickens in the soup yesterday. Excellent. Yeah. It well, was welcome wonderful. back. Anyway. Thank you. We had a long first day. Yeah, that's, that's a Unsaddle, enjoy Hello. yourselves. Hello. Have How about your here. trip? It's very good, thank you. Very good indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good team, worked well. We would like a, well, I would like a shave and a shower. And, uh, <laughs> but a wash will do. Um, but it's all good. Well, at long last, the convoy has arrived uh, in Coquinal. My goodness, we're glad to see them. Uh, it's only about uh, almost two weeks late. Uh, it's been a long struggle, though, to get across the river Irianis and uh, only really achieved by uh, Johnny, Johnny One um, driving the uh, various uh, uh, parts of this formula into action. The um, first thing was, of course, to get the pontoon, which didn't arrive. The second one was uh, to get a tractor, which has arrived, I think, thanks to the prefect. And the contractor also managed to hire this Unimog that's standing in front of us. Now, the Unimog um, is um, loaded with the water contractor's equipment, which is going to be used uh, for the wells in Coquinal and River Esperanza. And the remaining three vehicles, uh, one of which is towing the LED Sanford, um, uh, the ambulance boat, the remaining three vehicles are uh, our vehicles for the expedition. 
which we've now got to press ahead with. So it's a great relief today on the 13th of August to see them all here. Once the equipment was unloaded, we started work with all speed. We had to make up two weeks to put in the wells that Just the Drop had sponsored. This is um, well number three uh, of the series in Coquinao and proving a little easier to drill down than the other two have been. Uh, it's a very simple system. Uh, the young people of the village, and indeed some of the older people, are uh, uh, pulling on the pulley rope, which rise, raises and lowers the, the drill. Um, the engineer in the uh, white outfit at the bottom uh, turns the drill to cut down into the, into the rock. It's a Water is pumped uh, along through the green pipe uh, into the drill and down into the shaft. Then as the drill bores away at the rock, uh, the broken pieces, the spoil that have been cut out uh, down below are washed back up the shaft and they fall into this sort of slurry pit. Um, and from there, uh, the uh, residue is picked up by bucket and disposed of nearby. This is the drill head, very simple homemade, with bits of reinforcing iron. Uh, and the um, water comes down from the surface through this hollow uh, pipe, and it flows out through there. And then as the drill cuts away, so it digs deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're soon going to reach the moment where they have to uh, add another drilling rod, which is a, almost a, a minor achievement as you go on deeper into the earth. The uh, well drillers are operating this very simple system uh, have now just install a new two meter length uh, of pipe which is about to be lowered into the ground. At long last, the village has clean water, and boy, are they grateful to get it. Now that our four-wheel drive vehicles have arrived, we could resupply the horse team who were far out on the plain. Uh, we're now at Lager Lager, uh, looking for the horse team. We've just seen a, a local guide who's uh, come to tell us where they are. Uh, this village has been abandoned. It was obviously quite a settlement at one time, as we can see from the uh, radio mast and the uh, uh, other aerials and so on that are here. But no one is here now. The people use all their animals for transport, and they live very much off the land.
The main task for these villagers is the production of chivet, which they export. In the jungle, our geologists continued to search for evidence of a meteorite, and the archaeologists to look at some of the finds made by the people. Suddenly there was an alarm. A raider had appeared to attack the village chickens. It was a Kotamundi, a type of raccoon, and it went on to nearly kill three of the chief's dogs. The chief was terribly upset about the injuries to his dogs and asked if we could help. So our doctor, our dentist and Sarah Royal as honorary vet turned to to save the lives of these injured animals. There were other raiders there too and one day the horse team heard that a jaguar had killed one of the village cows. Having mended the dogs, uh, Alex and his colleagues turned back to helping the humans. And here comes Lady and Cass. The horse team returned to Cockinal for the launching of the ambulance boat that had been sponsored by Elodie Sanford and her brother Donnie and was a gift to the village to help them evacuate casualties across the Great Lake. Now we uh, have a photograph by uh, of the crew who've been trained to use the boat by our team. With it. Convoy. There we go. We haven't got a lot of but room. at last it was time to go home. And so we set out going south 
stopping at one or two villages to give aid on the way and crossing the rivers that had now subsided. Putting our bits back into place so we can get the footing going and right across. We took back uh, the boat brought up by one of our drivers, Pablo, who wanted it for fishing. But of course we left the ambulance boat back on the lake where it's still in use helping the people of Coquinal and the other villages. Luckily the river Irianes uh, was down to a much lower level than that it had been when we first arrived. On we went to Santa Ana, where at the Hotel Mamare we held our traditional Burns Night farewell party that we have at the end of every exit. Thanks to Mr. Staley who provides us with his marvelous tinned haggis. The arrival of the haggis! <laughs> To the haggis. For far a your honest saucy face, great chieftain of the pudding race. The, the, the tradition. I mean, I don't know if there's not there. That's a spare. What's a spare? Oh, go away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now you're going to fill me jolly. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Nearly all gone. How you taste them? They taste very good, huh? Now we do it. yellow idol. To the north of Kathmandu. He had loved her all along with a passion of the song. The fact that he loved him was plain to all. We are especially grateful to all those who helped to sponsor this expedition. And of course remember that without the help that we had from NSSL, the Spectra Group and Motorola, the communications wouldn't work. And they were crucial to the success of the venture. And we are especially grateful to the Simon F. Patinio Foundation who always gives such marvellous help to us when we are working in Bolivia.